Chapter 4, Ancient India. Important features of India are the mountains, the oceans, and the winds that blow across the region. They are shown here on the map. To help you become acquainted with India's geography and the climate, we are going to do a few activities. First, study the map. Describe the location of the mountains and the oceans. What effect do you think these features had on the movement of people to and from India? Pause the video for a few seconds and think about those questions and answer them in a discussion format. Next, follow the wind. Trace the wind arrows on the map with your finger. Which winds, winter or summer, do you think bring rain to India? Why? Which winds bring dry, cool air? And why do you think those winds do that? Pause the video for a few seconds and come up with your answers. You should have come to the conclusion that the summer monsoon, the wet winds, seen here in blue, bring this, the rain to India. Why would that be? Because the wind is coming from the Arabian Sea. The winds that bring the dry, cool air would be the winter monsoons coming down out of the Himalayan mountains. And that's exactly why it would be bringing the cool air from coming from the high elevations of the Himalayas. Questions to think about through this section. 1. How did the geography influence the history of India? 2. How did people live in one of the early cities in the Indus River Valley? Key terms that you'll come across. Subcontinent. Monsoon. Migrate. Caste. And citadel. Each of these terms will be defined for you in the vocabulary through the Google Classroom. Key places. The Himalayan Mountains. The Indus River Valley. Mohanjandaro. And the Ganges River Valley. Try to find each of these on the map on this slide. Chapter 4, Section 1. The Indus and Ganges River Valleys. People all around the world are affected by their environment. In what ways does your environment influence the way you live your everyday life? In what ways do you affect your environment? The picture here should look familiar if you've ever traveled around the Ramapo Reservation up Skyline Drive. Think about this and how this environment affects you living near Oakland and how in some ways you may have affected one time affected your environment. For thousands of years India was cut off from the rest of the ancient world by a great wall. Rising along India's northern border the wall was more than 1,500 miles long and nearly 5 miles high. The wall was not made of stone or bricks. It was a wall of snow-capped peaks and icy glaciers. This great barrier is the Himalaya Mountains, the highest mountain range in the world. In this geographic setting, stretching south from the Himalayan Mountains, the kite-shaped land of India bulges out from, the, from Asia into the Indian Ocean. Geographers refer to India as a subcontinent, or a large landmass that juts out from a standard continent. For centuries, geography limited contact between the Indian subcontinent and the rest of the world. The Himalayan mountains and the Hindu Kush separate India from Asia. Here you will find the Hindu Kush mountain range here as well. These are the Himalayans. And the Indian Ocean. The Bay of Bengal the Indian Ocean and the Arabian Sea limit contact with lands to the east and west. These mountains and waters have been a major influence on the history and culture of the land. 
A climate of monsoons. India's climate is dominated by the monsoons, strong winds that blow across the region at certain times of the year. Look again at the map on this page. From October to May, the winter monsoon blows from the northeast, spreading dry air across the country. Then, in the middle of June, the wind blows from, in, from the Indian Ocean. This summer monsoon picks up moisture from the ocean. It carries rains that drench the plains and river valleys daily. The people depend on summer monsoons to provide life-giving rain. If the monsoon is late or weak, crops die, causing famine. If it, is, if it brings too much rain, overflowing rivers may cause deadly floods. Barriers and Pathways Although the mountains isolate India from other lands, they do have openings. Find the passages on, the, on this map. You should be able to find the Khyber Pass as well as the Bolan Pass. For thousands of years, passes through the Hindu Kush mountain range have served as highways for invading people. The earliest people of northern India probably entered the valley of the Indus River through these pathways. Great rivers rise in the mountains. Fed by melting snows and rain, the Indus and Ganges rivers, here you'll find the Indus, here you'll find the Ganges, they cut through the mountains. They flow across the plains of northern India and make farming possible in the river valleys. Life in the Indus River Valley From the rich soil of the Indus River Valley, early farmers harvested a surplus of wheat and other grains. With a surplus of food, the population grew. Some villages became cities. From around 2500 BC to 1500 BC, well-planned cities flourished in the valley. One of these, Mohanjandaro, lay along the banks of the Indus River. The World's Earliest City Planners Mohanjandaro was a large city that needed careful planning. Because the Indus River often flooded, the city's rulers built Mohanjandaro on a high ground of earth. To make travel easier in the city, streets were laid out in squares. People built their homes and shops along these squares. At the center of the city was the citadel, or fortress. Here you can see the citadel. It was a group of public buildings enclosed by a high brick wall. One building had a huge bath with dressing rooms for bathers. Nearby stood a storehouse for the city's grain supply. Mohanjandaro must have been much cleaner than most other cities of the time. Clay pipes ran under the brick streets. They carried waste from homes and public buildings away from the city. Outside the city, canals ran along the Indus River, which often flooded. The canals controlled the flooding and directed water where it was needed most. You can see the baked bricked ruins of the Mohanjandaro and its citadel in the present day country of Pakistan. Living in Mohanjandaro The city buzzed with activity. Merchants and artisans sold their wares from shops that lined the streets. Wagons loaded with grain rolled through the city. Traders came from as far away as Mesopotamia to buy and sell precious goods. The citizens of Mohanjandaro lived in homes that opened onto courtyards. Children played with toys and pets. Adults enjoyed games and music. Artisans fashioned jewelry and bright cotton clothing for the people to wear. The language of the people is still a mystery. Their writings appear on square seals. But experts have not yet been able to figure out the writing. The form of government and the religion of Mohanjandaro are also unknown. No royal tombs or great temples have been found but we do know they had a number of gods. A Mysterious Decline About 2000 BC, in the Indus River Valley farmers began to abandon their land. The climate may have changed, turning the fertile soil into a desert. Or great earthquakes may have caused floods that destroyed the canals. Without enough food, people began to leave the cities of the Indus River Valley. Between 2000 BC and 15,000 BC, invaders from the north entered the valley. The people who remained at, Mo at Mohanjandaro were too weak to resist them. Conquest by the Aryans The invaders called themselves Aryans, which in their language meant noble or high-born. 
they migrated or moved from their homeland in Central Asia. For several centuries, waves of these nomadic herders swept into India. As the Aryans crossed the plains of northern India, the people of the Indus River Valley huddled behind the crumbling walls of their cities. They were no match for Aryan warriors armed with bows and arrows and axes. Especially terrifying were their chariots drawn by charging horses. Gradually, the Aryans conquered the people of the Indus River Valley. Many became slaves of the invaders. Aryans occupied northern India. After they had conquered the Indus River Valley people, the Aryans gradually moved into the Ganges River Valley to the east. By about 800 BC, they had learned to make tools and weapons out of iron. With iron axes, the Aryans cleared areas of the thick rainforest to the, of the northeast. Here they built farms, villages, and even cities. Aryan Life Most of what we know of Aryan life comes from religious books called Vedas, which means knowledge. At first, the Vedas were handed down from memory by Aryan priests. They were not written down for hundreds of years. The Vedas tell us that the earliest Aryans were herders and warriors who lived in villages and tended flocks of cattle and sheep. Always on the move, these people did not build cities or spacious homes at first. For a long time, they had no written language. Priests, called Brahmins, performed religious services and composed hymns and prayers. The Aryans organized their society around three classes. Priests guarded religious traditions. Warriors fought. And ordinary people worked. Gradually, the Aryans drew the conquered people into their class system and made them a fourth class. This class included farm workers, laborers, and servants. By 500 BC, there was a strict division of classes. Europeans later called it the caste system. Each caste, or class, had, a spe had special work and duties to perform. Under the caste system, people always had to stay in the caste of their parents. Over time, the caste system became more complicated. The main caste divided into hundreds of different groups in which each person had the same occupation or type of work. Shopkeepers, farmers, traders, barbers, and weavers each belonged to their own group. Since people could not leave their caste, they did, not, they did the same work as their parents and other members of the group. A weaver's son would be a weaver. A barber's daughter would marry a barber. This is the end of section one. Make sure you completed your notes through the Google Classroom to submit and turn in for homework. Also, be able to answer the next following questions. How did geography affect the way people lived in ancient India? Two, how did the leaders of Mohanjandaro plan their city? And finally, the people of the Indus River Valley planned their cities with great care. What might this tell you about their form of government and their values? Once again, make sure to use this video to complete your Google Doc and submit through the Google Classroom for homework. And we'll see you in class tomorrow.